After all these preparations, I hope that now the proof is relatively simple. So let's start. Uh, first of all, I think I forgot something uh, at some point in the lecture. Um, uh, we definitely have that the kernel of k adjoint k is the same as the kernel of k. And of course, the kernel of k k adjoint is the kernel of k adjoint. Uh, and the reason is the following. Definitely the kernel of, uh, kernel of k is a subset of the kernel of k star k. But uh, the other way around, we have that uh, if x is in the kernel of k star k, then the scalar product of x and k star k x is 0. But this is nothing but kx scalar product with kx, and this is the norm of kx squared. So that means that x is in the kernel. OK, so uh, we have that. And uh, first of all, there was uh, uh, what I used. Well, I defined these left singular -like vectors vk by vk as kuk over norm of kuk, where uk was the orthonormal system of eigenvectors generated by 2.40 for eigenvalues not equal to 0. OK, um, first of all, it might be that this is 0, right? I mean, k, uk might be 0, but we have that sigma k square, um, uh, uk is an eigenvector of k star k uh, with respect to the eigenvalue sigma k squared. So we have sigma, so we have sigma k squared uk is k star k times uk, and sigma k or sigma k squared is not equal to 0. And since this is an eigenvector also, uk is not equal to 0. Now, if that is true, then um, k uk cannot be 0. Otherwise, the left-hand side would be 0. So k uk is not 0, and defining the vk as what we have here absolutely makes sense. I claim that uh, the vk form an orthonormal system. Let's prove that too. So let k not equal to l. And uh, then we have that uh, the scalar product of vk of vl is, well, what's the definition? 1 over the norm of k uk times 1 over the norm of k ul times the scalar product of um, excuse me, k u k and k u l. But uh, this is the same as k star k u k and u l. And uh, since u k is an eigenvector, this is nothing but sigma k square times uk scalar product with ul. And since the uk was a, an orthonormal system, this is 0 for k not equal to l. OK, um, one thing is that um, if one consequence of that is if uk is an independent system, oh, first of all, um, this over here, what I've proved first, um, no, I, I didn't prove that yet, I just realized. Um, next thing is uh, we want to show that vk, which is now properly defined as an orthonormal, orthonormal set of vectors, um, is actually a set of eigenvectors. So let's look at that, uh, eigenvectors of kk star. So let's look at, I'll never learn that. k 
K, K adjoint applied to VK is the same as K uh, as one over the norm of K UK times K, K adjoint, K UK. Now, um, K adjoint K, um, UK is an eigenvector of K adjoint K, so this is nothing but sigma K squared times one of the, the norm of K UK times K UK, and this is nothing but sigma K squared times, oh, excuse me, sigma K, um, sigma K. No, I'm, I'm a little bit lost, sigma K squared, this is correct, sigma K squared times, and, and now this is VK, what's there? So VK is an eigenvector of KK star, for the eigenvalue sigma k star, sigma k squared. And let me check that I really wrote sigma k squared over here and not, yes, that's what I did. Okay, now um, what about the, uh, we now know that uh, uh, every eigenvalue of kk star is also an eigenvalue of k star k. And uh, of course, if you interchange the roles of k and k adjoint, uh, then this is also true the other way around. So any eigenvalue of k, k, uh, k star k is also an eigenvalue of k, k, uh, k, k. Every eigenvalue of uh, k, k adjoint is also an eigenvalue of k adjoint k. So, so both have the same eigenvalues. Um, what about the ranges? Well, uh, since the UK and VK are um, orthonormal, are orthonormal systems, uh, that means if uh, you, the UK are definitely all linearly independent, and so uh, and, and also the VKs are all linearly de uh, dependent. So if uh, the rain, if the um, dimension of the eigenspace for an uh, eigenvalue lambda is n in uh, of k, 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 k star k. So if we have eigenvectors u1 to un in, in x for the operator k star k, I should write this down. Let um, u, well, let's not call this u, let um, w1 to Wn, eigenvectors of k star k for the eigenvalue lambda not equal to zero. And this should be a subset of u1 and then so on. So this should be some of the ui's. Um, then the corresponding kvn, um, we just showed that the corresponding kwn and kwm are an orthonormal set of eigenvectors Of k star of k k star, and so that means at least that uh, the dimension of the eigenspace of the kernel. Let's write it as the kernel of k star k minus lambda i is smaller or equal to the kernel, to the dimension of the kernel of k, k star. So it's k star k, k, k star minus lambda times i. Because if we uh, take a complete set 
of um, uh, if we take a basis of the of this kernel, then by the transformation by applying that to uh, k, we get linear indep linearly independent vectors, orthonormal vectors in the kernel of k k star minus lambda i. So the uh, the dimension of the um, of the eigenspace cannot get smaller. But now by exchanging the roles of k and k star, we see that the inequality is also valid the other way around. So there's only one thing left. This must be equal. So the dimensions of the eigenspaces of k, k star and k star k are the same. And all that's, that's also, uh, that always all only valid if uh, we uh, look at eigenvalues not equal to zero, right? Okay, so they have the same, um, so they have, so th since this went uh, a little bit far away, let's state what we just proved. The dimensions of the eigenspaces of k, k star and k star k, k star k for an eigenvalue lambda are the same. And in fact, if we have a basis, an orthonormal basis um, uh, for the eigenspace in, of k, k star, then by the operation, by applying that to k, we get an orthonormal system of eigen, an orthonormal basis uh, for the eigenspace in k, stake, uh, k, k star. Okay, um, so next thing is, um, I've just uh, proved that the norm of um, K, uh, that uh, k u k is not zero. Actually, we can be a little bit better, and that's the norm of k u k squared is nothing but uh, the scalar product of k u k with k u k, and this is uh, k star k u k with u k. So this is the same as sigma k squared times what well, the norm of uk squared and that's one so this is actually sigma k squared so since sigma was chosen to be positive we have that uh, definitely sigma k is the norm of k uk which in fact means that uh, the vk's which were defined as uh, one of the norm of k UK times UK, that's actually one over sigma K times UK. Okay, uh, now the next thing was um, I claimed that the VKs are eigenvectors of K star K. And uh, well, then that of K, K star, yes, that's all, that I already proved. Um, so what's missing? Ah, yes, okay. Um, there's also a correlation between the VK and the UK. So we have um, K star K, K or K, uh, K star K, UK is the same as sigma K squared times UK. But this is also nothing but the norm of, uh, well, now sigma K, times the uh, k star, times k uk, I forgot that here. Uh, sigma k times, and I should do what I promised. This was a mistake. Um, um, we also have uh, that uh, sigma k, k adjoint times 
KUK now is VK over sigma K together with sigma K in the front. This is the same as sigma K squared times UK. Or we have that K star VK is the same as sigma K times UK. And doing everything the other way around, we get that K UK is nothing but sigma K times VK. And now we only have to compute the final representation. And uh, since uh, the UK are the complete orthonormal system of eigenvectors, for eigenvalues not equal to zero, we can represent uh, any U in X as the sum over all U and UK times UK plus some element U perp in the kernel of K. And now we have that KU, well, K is uh, compact, so it's continuous. So this is nothing but the sum of all K, U and UK times K UK uh, plus K applied to U perp is nothing. So this is the same as the sum of all k, k uk is sigma k times vk, so sigma k times scalar product of u and uk times vk. And this is the representation which I claimed. Now, the other way around, let's take a v in y. Um, I claim that V can be represented as sum of all, all K, uh, V and VK times VK plus some element V perp. Why is that the case? Well, we know that there is some representation of that kind with um, eigenvalues and eigenvectors of K. And uh, now assume that uh, the VK were not complete and there's an additional eigenvector which was not listed, which is not listed in the VK. Now, since we proved that there is a one-to-one -one correspondence between the VKs and the UK, so for every eigenvector in uh, of K, K star, uh, we get an eigenvector of uh, K star K. This would give us an additional eigenvector if in uh, um, for k star k, which is not listed among the UK. And uh, so that's impossible because the UK were a complete system. So we can represent our V in uh, this way. And now let's compute k star V. Again, this is the same as the sum of all k, V and V k times k star VK and, and of course now V perp is in uh, the kernel of uh, um, K K adjoint which is the kernel of K adjoint which I just proved. So this is uh, definitely uh, the same. This is definitely true. And now K star VK is the same as, uh, we just proved that, uh, sigma k times uk. So this is the same as the sum over all k, sigma k, scalar product of v and vk times uk. And this is exactly the singular value decomposition, which I always promised and which we will now compute for a simple example.